And we're back with leading Republican uh, legislators in the Florida House. And uh, we had a great first half and great, great comments on who were their mentors and and what do they want to communicate to that next generation. Now these very leaders are running uh, legislation and, and leading the way. So uh, we're going to start with Representative uh, Grawl. And, uh, and Representative Grawl, would you share uh, with our viewers uh, what sort of legislation are you leading on? Well, thank you for the opportunity to talk about that this year. Um, definitely focused in the House on the interference from foreign countries in our research institutions. And so really just shedding light on um, contributions that are made to our state entities and university systems from foreign actors who seek to undermine um, our research, take our intellectual property. And so focusing on that for sure um, this year, it, it's really building on some work that the House we did in the House last year. and. Um, I'm back in the early education space. I've been there for all five years. I uh, think our earliest learners deserve a, a system that can be held accountable. Um, there's so many opportunities when, from zero to five with children to ensure that they are ready to hit kindergarten um, running and putting their best foot forward and it really focus, you know, will ensure their long-term success. And um, the last thing that I'd like to mention is the Parents' Bill of Rights. This is the third year that I've that I've championed parents' rights in the house. And I think that it's important that we put families first and we allow parents, parents are the first educator for their child. They're, they have a, a long-term investment in the success of their children and our institutions shouldn't get in the way of that. And so uh, I've been proud champion of parents' rights for the last, um, since, I, since I arrived, but I think this year um, we certainly have an opportunity to move some significant legislation across the finish line. Yeah, well, th well, thanks for sharing those bills um, with us, Representative Grawl. Representative Mariano, how about you? What, what are you working on this session? Yeah, so this session, um, I'm lucky to work in the higher ed space. And, you know, I think it's really going to be, you know, because of the impact of COVID-19 on our budget, I think it's really going to be a big defense year. And that's a lot of what we do up here is trying to make sure the things that we support stay intact. And, you know, we have a great scholarship programs here in the state. And while, you know, it may be an easy way to save some money this upcoming session, I think it's really important that we protect those. So I think it's going to be a lot of defense. Um, I have some bills I'm working on trying to provide transparency for state contracts. Um, we saw the disaster of the unemployment system here in the state of Florida unfold and we just want to get down to the root of the problem and see you know what we can do to make sure that problems like that never happen again so those are a couple of things yeah well it's just just tackling the light stuff again I see right that's that, that's you you're always on on top of big issues like all of you are uh, Representative Toledo what are you working on this year thank you so much for that question um, so this year I'm working on a new concept uh, for higher education, and that would be a tuition scholarship or waiver for um, high demand degrees. So with lower tuition for high demand degrees, such as engineering, education, healthcare, and other um, workforce needs that we have. So it's gonna be filling the gap for our workforce needs and also guiding students to those degrees um, and lowering the cost. So I think this will very timely bill um, for students, for parents, for families in the state of Florida to help with the cost of um, education. And um, so I think I'm very excited about that bill. And also um, human trafficking, I think that's an issue that's prevalent, unfortunately, in the state of Florida, but it's, it's there and uh, we need to combat that and try to uh, end it. So I filed a bill that will address a training program for um, human trafficking um, advocates. Um, it will expedite the expungement process for uh, victims, and then it would have some prosecution reforms so that victims do not have to face and relive their trauma. So I hope to, you know, move that bill forward this year and just um, hope to end human trafficking. So those are two of the bills that I'm working on. Yeah, here, here on, on that. Representative Trabolsi, what's on your agenda this year? Thank you. So I am uh, going back to organizational session. Our speaker um, spoke about the opportunity to give every child the opportunity to read and how fundamental reading is. And so I feel very fortunate to be carrying House Bill 3, which is the New World's Reading Initiative. And this will allow 
all children from kindergartens through grade five who are underperforming in reading to be able to have at home free book delivery every month paired with uh, learning materials for their parents and activities. So um, reading and just knowing that, you know, we learn to read and then we read to learn and that's so valuable. Um, also, I sit on healthcare appropriations committee, and this is a huge responsibility as we're trying to balance a very critical budget this year. Um, healthcare appropriations carries 48% of our budget in the state. So I am digging deep into that, learning a lot, and I'm lurking, looking forward to making some great choices um, for the citizens of the state. Yeah, wow, all right. Representative McFarland, close this out. What bills are you working on? It does, those are tough acts to follow, Brad, aren't they? We're really covering the spectrum. Um, from, from my bit of the pie this year, I'm, I'm focusing on several items, the biggest of which is technology. So I've got a big bill that's, that's coming out that will establish the right of the consumer to own their own data online. It sounds so simple, uh, but that's a, a, a big stand that we're taking in technology here in Florida. Secondly, I'm working to expand access to vaccines, the COVID vaccine in particular, um, and, and giving some more pharmacists the ability to administer vaccines. And then a third sort of ish side issue I'm working on is um, removing barriers for retired teachers to come back into the classroom as substitutes, as we saw such a lack of substitute teachers as we started this school year. Um, but I would add, echoing on, on, on what all these great women have said, is, is the Florida House is working on on every issue you can think of that, that affects Florida, whether it's the environment, sea level rise, uh, education from early K through 12 and, and post-secondary, um, and and I assure you, there's someone in the Florida House that is is tackling any issue you can think of. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I, I think from uh, somebody who works in the business, I I couldn't agree more. There's just mm -hmm. a, a million items going on in every direction. From from the panelists' perspective. Um, Talk to me about how you feel about uh, um, Speaker Sproul's empowerment of of women leaders in the House. I mean, this is kind of a pop question on y'all, but you know, tell us a little <laughs> bit about how you feel you can work around, or, you know, how you can work in the House um, under his leadership. Anyone can pick that one. <laughs> I, I will start. Um, I think Speaker Sproul's is very supportive of um, bringing more women to the table. I think he was in engaged in the um, election process this last cycle in making sure that, you know, we are bringing strong women to the House. He understands that perspective is important. He's so supportive of the role that women play in our families. Um, when I let him know that I was um, expecting our third child, you know, right at the beginning, um, right around organizational session, um, wanted to make sure that he knew that I was still willing and ready to help at my highest and best capacity and um, was blessed that he decided that, that meant that I could serve on the leadership team in a role, you know, overseeing public integrity and in elections. And I think that he just, he doesn't shy away from, um, from our involvement and he really embraces women in the house and says, you know, come to the table, let's have a conversation. And so I think, I think that it's an honor to serve under Speaker Sprouse. It was a great answer, and we're getting a little bit of freeze on your representative Grawl. Forgive me. And I would echo those All right. um, um, as well and say that he's definitely empowered us. Um, we share in our core values, and um, he's given us a lot of discretion. I think because he is married to such a strong woman that he understands the role that we play, and he trusts in us. So we're very grateful to have him as our leader. All right. Thank you, Representative. For the good of the order, anybody else? Yeah, I mean, I think I think Erin was right on the money when she said, "Look at our past election cycle." I'm not sure how many women freshmen we had elected. I think it's around ten this past cycle. Eight. There's eight of us. Eight. And so, you know, I remember when we were first elected as freshmen, we were told we had the most women ever, and when they, I thought it was going to be like twenty. And when they told me it was five, <laughs> you know, it was uh, pretty shocking. But out of, it was 26 from our class, I something like that. And so now, you know, from five to eight, that's a, a big improvement when your class sizes are, you know, around 20 to 30. So, um, you know, it, it's just inching away at it. And when you're the Speaker D and you're leading house campaigns, you know, you are a lot of the credit for that. And obviously those women 
running, of course, but you know, you, you, they need the support of the of House campaigns, especially in those tough general elections. So, you know, I think he's much to credit for that. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So now we're going to move to a slightly uh, more entertaining side of the program, mm -hmm. and uh, for the viewers, right? So, so you ladies work your your you know you work extremely hard to serve your constituents, and um, and all, all day long. But we know at some time you, you got to put your feet up and, and decompress a little bit and stream something. So we're going to start. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start at the top of the order with Representative McFarland. What do you stream when you're not fighting for the free world? I've been on a Deadwood binge. I know it's an older program, but it is my guilty pleasure when I unplug from the house. It's just the Wild West and the early American frontier and how they established order when there were no laws or government, and I just love it. Yeah, I think Ian McShane's role in that is just the best town bad guy. I love that show. It's amazing, and the cast is just it's, it's breathtaking. So, okay. You get a good, you get a check plus because you're all, you all will get a check plus on what you select. All right, Representative <laughs> McFarland, your turn. Oh, excuse me, Representative Trabulsi, your turn. What, what are you streaming um, when you've got time? So I will tell you, I don't have a lot of time to stream, and usually when I do stream, I fall asleep. However, um, I did stay in Tallahassee this weekend, and I completely binge watched the entire series. Uh, Firefly Lane and if you haven't watched it it's so good it takes me to my youth because I grew up in the 60s and 70s and it brings me to my future with long-term friendships and just the nice parodies and love that two women can have for each other through friendship and life it's it's just a great show now remind me that's the one where they meet each other in school as kids and then they grow with with, with each other throughout life right y yes I haven't seen that one, but I'm gonna have to check that one out. Okay, all right, so for the buddy picture throughout life, we got it. All right, um, <laughs> who's up next? Representative Toledo, what are you streaming? Usually I don't have time to watch TV, but if my kids are watching TV, then I join them, and they're usually watching something like Gossip Girl, which I absolutely love, the fashion, New York, and I identify as being young, but I'm not, so I definitely watch Gossip Girl. <laughs> If I really want to just take a break, I'll watch Beat because it's funny and we kind of live in. I love it. All right, we got a minute left. So, Representative Mariano and Grawl, you got to go quick. Representative Mariano, mm -hmm. what are you streaming nowadays? WandaVision. I'm one episode from the finale. It's amazing. I got through two episodes. I, I'm going to go dig in again. Okay. Um, you to, have to, to, to go. All right. All right. Representative Grawl, what are you watching? Well, in our house with a seven-year-old, a nine-year-old, and a baby, we are watching Kids Baking Championship almost every single season. <laughs> I think we've caught up. And so because we're at the end of Kids Baking Championship, we just started Iron Chef America from the beginning. So we're working on, we homeschool, and we're working on some cooking lessons in our house. So um, my husband and I enjoy Jack Ryan. We're watching it for the second time um, right now, um, second go round. So, but that's an after the kids are in bed type of yeah, show. So. Of course, of course. Great. Two great seasons. Well, ladies, um, on this International Women's Day and during this International um, Women's Month, thank you for the leadership that you provide to all of your constituents and frankly to the state of Florida. Um, your opinions and your your input is, you know, at the pinnacle of leadership. And uh, on behalf of FIT, um, our members, the 130,000 employees that um, bring that cable uh, connection to Florida's homes. Um, we just we just thank you for your leadership and raising your hand and listening to mom and listening to those amazing mentors and uh, empowering that next generation. We we appreciate you coming on Fi TV and sharing your stories. Thank you. Thank you. Brad. Thank you. Brad. That's all the time. That's all the time we have for this episode of Fi TV. Make sure you hit us up on our social media feed for more great interviews like this one. And for now. Thanks for tuning in.